The brontosaurus was a dinosaur we all loved. Then we were told it wasn't real. But now it's back. What's going on? Hey everyone, Crystal here with more D News. What picture pops into your head when I say the word dinosaur? If you're like me, it's probably brontosaurus, triceratops, or T-Rex. Doesn't matter that now I know better, no amount of scientific training can make me unsee the land before time. But Littlefoot wasn't the beginning of our cultural love affair with Brontosaurus. Everyone's favorite dinosaur that wasn't, Brontosaurus excelsus, thundered onto the scene in 1879 when paleontologist Orthniel Charles Marsh published a paper titled Notice of New Jurassic Reptiles, and Brontosaurus, basically due to an excellent PR team, quickly became the pattern card for our idea of these giant lizards. But Marsh had discovered many similar fossils, and Brontosaurus' problems began around 1903 when a more in-depth analysis of Marsh's collection by another paleontologist revealed that the differences between Brontosaurus and the earlier named Apatosaurus were too slight for the two to be more than different species. Remember the biological taxonomy kingdom phylum class order family genus species? Well, Apatosaurus became the common genus, and what we know as the Brontosaurus was demoted to Apatosaurus excelsius. But the name Brontosaurus refused to fade into the mists. It was so beloved, it took more than 50 years for museums to consistently present the dinosaur under its correct classification. And the use of the name in pop culture and children's books persisted almost until present day. You know, because science literacy is not really a thing in this country. Speaking of museums, you may have heard a rumor that the existence of Brontosaurus was a simple case of mistaken identity when a Camarasaurus head was incorrectly matched to an Apatosaurus body. But this isn't really true. Yes, at one time we thought the Apatosaurus skull looked similar to Camarasaurus's, but identification of Brontosaurus as a genus had nothing to do with that mix and match. In fact, we didn't know what the skull of Apatosaurus looked like until the late 70s, when a fossil discovered in the early 1900s was finally confirmed confirmed to belong to Apatosaurus. So what happened? We're finally accepting that Brontosaurus was a thing of the past, and the name Brontosaurus has now returned. Well, this is how science works. It's a process, and new technologies and insights can render previous ways of thinking obsolete. Also, when it comes to naming really old organisms, scientists are constantly refining their approach. So in this case, an international team of scientists performed one of the most extensive specimen-based phylogenetic analyses of the sauropod dinosaurs. The specimens were scored for 477 morphological characters. The paper, published in the journal Pier J, contains a provocative statement. Of particular note is that the famous genus Brontosaurus is considered valid by our quantitative approach. Now this issue is by no means settled. Other researchers in the field have to agree, and that hasn't happened yet. One of the most important aspects of science is reproducibility. If your colleagues can't reproduce your experiment and results and draw the same conclusion as you did, your finding remains just an opinion, and that's not very scientific. But we have hope! And while experts like my friend Brian Swinnick warn that our old idea of Brontosaurus as a large, dumb, water-loving animal will never again see the light of day, a lighter, more streamlined version may once again take pride of place in our museum halls and textbooks. What do you think? Should Brontosaurus return? Subscribe to DNews and let us know in the comments down below. And for more nerdy fun, you can follow me on Twitter at PolyCrystalHD.